Hey art nerds, so I just finished up with my roughs today. I want to share them with you guys, compare them to the thumbnails, and then talk about our next step. So as I've talked about in some of my previous comic planning videos, I spend one day per rough. And part of the reason I do this is it's easier on my hand because I tend to put a lot of pressure on my hand when I'm drawing for this sort of stuff. And it also lets me focus on other things that I might have going on in my life. I would rather have a sustainable work schedule that I can keep up no matter what's going on in my life rather than a work schedule that I have to drop as soon as anything comes up. So I really just focus on getting one rough done a day, kind of regardless of what's on the page. So I'm just going to flip through this with you guys. As you guys could probably see, I have a lot of notes still written on the page. And for this stage of making comics, it's all about Gitmo. Just get enough to move on. Establish basic facial expressions, basic human anatomy construction, basic placement, establish backgrounds that are actually accurate using perspective grids. Because in my next stage, when I scan these and I work on these digitally, I can make further corrections there. And it'll be easier for me to make corrections there than it would be at this stage. And even when I'm penciling and inking these pages, I have an opportunity to tweak things, to add additional details, maybe to remove details. So the way my comment process works, it is very slow and sometimes it feels very unrewarding because I work on a lot of stages that I don't really show to people. And, and I basically spend a lot of time on these stages and then I start working on the more finished stages. So unlike a lot of webcomic artists, I don't do one page at a time or one scene at a time. I do the entire chapter at a time and that can be really time consuming, especially when I have longer chapters, like some of the main chapters in volume two, which are like 24 pages, 26 pages. This is just a 12 page mini comic. So this is a lot more accessible. It moved a lot quicker, but imagine doing 26 pages of roughs and it's rough. That's the point. The drawing is still kind of rough. You don't really want to show it to people because it's not anything you're particularly proud of other than just to show people your drawing process. So um, I'm really happy this stage is finished. This is the stage that is the hardest on my hands. My arthritis really acts up at this stage and that's because I'm using that grueling metal pencil. Speaking of metal pencil, these are the materials that I use for my rough stage. I use a stack of plain copier paper. I use blue tape, uh, painter's tape because it is lower because it is lower tack. And this is also what I use on my care pages, so it's what I have on hand. I have a couple of clear rulers. This is a 24-inch Pacific Arc ruler. I had a heck of a time finding a good clear acrylic ruler, and this one isn't necessarily like my favorite options for a clear acrylic ruler, but I wanted a longer one, and this is a decent option for that. This is actually my preference, um, and I have two of these. And I let my students in my Making Comics class borrow it and they always want to take it home and I always tell them no because I need these back. These are uh, Japanese rulers. This one is from Muji. It is, um, it has graphing on it and it's in the metric system. And this one is a Stod ruler. It's also Japanese. Um, it's kutsu, uh, Katsua. Sorry about that. And I picked this up at a Mido in San Francisco. 
and um, it's also in metric. And these are really, this one in particular, because it has an inking edge, this one's really my favorite, but I like both of them pretty well. I also use, this is the metal drafting pencil that wrecks my hand, and I continue to use it because I can bear down with enough pressure. Uh, sometimes my pages, the, the grids get really heavy on them, and this allows me to bear down, but I would really recommend you avoid these kind of pencils. They look cool, they look professional. It's like, oh, you're a comic artist, aren't you? These will wreck your hands. Um, I also use a soft blue Pilot Color Eno, and these are the refills I use. So this is the soft blue Pilot Color Eno, and this is Pentel High Polymer in B. And I use a few different racers, and it kind of depends on what I have available at the time. I really like this Tombow Knock Eraser. I also have a Tombow Mono Zero Eraser for erasing fine details. I have a Ruflot Seedless Eraser, and this one is kind of kind of dusty and gross. And I have a Moo Eraser here. This is a really soft eraser. So those are the materials that I use for making my roughs. So I also thought it would be fun to compare the thumbnails to the roughs just to give you guys kind of an idea of how these pages have grown. So I had a few different ideas for the title illustration. I ended up going with Naomi holding Pancake dressed in a banana costume. And I changed things up just a little bit. I really liked this staging in particular. It's more dynamic than this. But when I went to reference this and I posed for the reference, I found that this was just when you're holding a 12 pound cat, and not that Pancake is a 12 pound cat, but Bowie is a 12 pound cat, and he was the model. When you're holding a 12 pound cat in one arm and he's kind of wiggling and he's in a costume he doesn't want to be in, you got to get that picture as quick as possible. And it kind of helps to hold the camera closer to you so you can conserve your core body strength. So. I like this shot better. I think it's more dynamic and I may do some significant restaging with this to kind of capture that dynamism again. But um, this was worked more closely from reference. And then I needed to add a page because I had a double page spread in there. And I decided to do Naomi practicing her oboe because that kind of sets her personality. I've shown her doing summer reading before. I have, in some of the actual comic pages, I have her reading To Kill a Mockingbird, which was my ninth grade summer reading. And it's one of my favorite books, but it's like everybody's ninth grade summer reading. Um, it'd be nice to have some variety. Uh, so I decided to have her practicing the oboe instead and kind of sweating it out. Maybe it's because it's hot or maybe it's because she's struggling with it. Maybe she's new to the oboe. Having been forced to switch from clarinet when she went to high school band, which happens to so many people because clarinet is one of the instruments they really, really push. Clarinet was pushed on me, so I quit clarinet. Anyway, that has no bearing on this. And then we have our the rough, like the traditional roughs. And what I did here is I scanned it and I blew it up in Photoshop. I printed it as non-photo blue lines and I went from there. And I have other videos in this series where I kind of talk about that. But as you can see, there's not necessarily a whole lot of transition from this thumbnail to this rough. Over here, there's just a little bit of restaging here Otherwise, things are, oh, and this one was pulled out a lot to better show what's going on in the bathroom and to better show Naomi's physical action. This one was also pulled out a lot and Naomi was moved inward. This one uh, pulled out somewhat to better show her physical action. And even... Even so, I still have notes like pull out, pull out, because I always am, I always work kind of too tight, especially for thumbnails. This one was pulled out. And then we have the bicycle scene. And um, bicycles are pretty difficult to draw if you're actually freehand drawing them. In the past, I've taken reference of myself on my bike and then just kind of traced the bike from there, which is fine. It is my own photo reference and I own the right to do that. Um, my bike is in my attic and there was no way I was getting that down. So instead I had to draw it and that's why this one looks a little bit rough, but I want to tighten that up in later stages.
this I may have to redraw. I'm not really satisfied with it. And this is one of the pages I actually did a tutorial where I kind of mentioned that I was home alone. I didn't have anyone to help me with reference and I couldn't find what I was looking for through Google images. So this may be something that I have to stage and redraw, but I like this so much better. Like here, she's like boo-booing his tummy, but that looks kind of weird here. She has him off to the side so you can more clearly see the action. This one was pulled out so you can see her hand because it cut her off mid arm and I felt like it was kind of hard to tell it was a yawn. And even here I have a note that I need to better indicate that it's a yawn. And then I added just a little bit of extra set dressing as well as pancake going down the stairs. I may end up flipping or doing something else with this panel. And this page I thought I really wouldn't like, but I actually like her body language a lot and I definitely remember as a kid growing up in hot Louisiana summers which is where this takes place like laying if there was shady cool pavement I would go lay on the shady cool pavement and read so um, she's kind of taking a nap over here or just generally being bummed out I may do something to fix these two panels just so that they read a little bit better I actually like how they read in the thumbnails better than I like how they read in the panels themselves and sometimes that happens like sometimes the abstraction of the panels is more fun or more interesting than what you end up doing with it so then you have to kind of rework it and I changed the staging over here so that pancake is actually looking at us and doing like a paw bag change the staging over here but even so I still say that I need to pull out I may want to redraw her face. It's not as cute as I wanted. And then we have the double page spread. And you guys can see I handled this as a single unit. So there's a lot of work that I still want to do on this double page spread. And I have notes. or I, Yeah, here we go. I have notes for this spread. And I want to add them back in so they're together. Because digitally, I want to draw Naomi's face in the corners like she's the narrator and have her expressions more hopeful than what's actually going on in the panel. But I do need to keep in mind that there's going to be text, like narration text, which I don't normally do. But there's going to be narration text going on over these, so I may need to pull out a lot. And digitally, I may need to accommodate for the text, like figure out where the text is going and then pull in so that nothing important is covered by the text. That's what I mean by like, I always work too tight. Or, I, yeah, I always work too pulled in. And then this page kind of has a lot going on and um, obviously in this bottom panel I have notes that and there's going to be a lot of reworking that I'm going to have to do digitally on this panel. And then we have the in cap and that's something I normally do because I feel like it kind of brings things to a close, it gives a better sense of closure and it just kind of gives a sense of peace. Now, generally you would want to end your comics on a cliffhanger, but I do, um, and there's actually like a whole genre in manga about like um, refreshing comics or healing comics that kind of rejuvenate you. And that's really what I focus my work on doing is kind of, for the most part, healing and rejuvenating and giving like a sense of peace to the reader. So that's why I like doing these sort of in caps. So what I think is going to be neat, what I think is neat here is you can see how different the art is from the roughs. So each stage I generally try to get tighter and tighter and do more work. What I'm going to do here on this spread is I'm actually going to leave everyone as these sort of mannequin figures. And this was kind of inspired by reading a silent voice where there are X's on the people's faces that he doesn't interact with or he doesn't know very well or he sees as strangers. Um, so to kind of give this sense of like Naomi is an outsider and she doesn't really fit in yet. Um, she's the only one who's rendered out. And I think that also kind of suits the idea of she's retelling this story from her own narrative. Oh, that was the filler piece. So the next step is to scan these and send them off, hopefully, 
to a couple people to beta read. I used to be really, really big on beta reading. I still am. I think it's really important, but people are busy and it's increasingly hard to find someone who can put the time in, even just 30 minutes, into beta, beta reading. And it's also important to find people who are invested enough in your story and in the work that you're doing to be interested in helping you improve it and you don't have to completely retell the story to them every single time they look at a chapter. So it's just gotten harder to find beta readers, but that's okay. I still have a couple who do really good work and who I can count on. So that, I'm lucky in that regard. So that about wraps it up for the roughs portion of this as of yet unnamed somewhat bonus chapter. The things that happen in this chapter are important to the story of Seven Inch Kara, but they it's told from Naomi's point of view, whereas things are usually told from Kara's point of view. So it's a bonus, but it's not really a bonus bonus. I've been thinking a lot about what I want the final treatment to look like. And I have a blog post where I talk about deciding on the final treatment for your art. And for this, originally I was gonna do it in black and white, and then I thought black and white and tone, and then I was like, well, black and white and grayscale. And now I think I want to do inked line art and then simple watercolor. That way it feels like it is part of the whole story, but not um, a direct part, if that makes sense. So it's a retelling from somebody else's point of view. And also there's a lot of things I can do with color that will help the storytelling. And maybe I'm just too reliant on using color. I've definitely been accused of that in the past, but my work is in color, so you know, it is what it is. Um, and more and more comics are being produced and published in color, so maybe I shouldn't try to fight that. But there's more storytelling things I can do in watercolor that will help this kind of come together as a whole. So doing the inks plus watercolor, I think is a really good direction to go in for this. So I will see you guys at our next step. I hope you've been enjoying my comic prep and process series. And I hope you guys are looking forward to volume two of Seven Inch Kara. You can read volume one for free as well as some beautiful guest comics over at seveninchkara.com or seveninchkara.tumblr.com. And since it is a web comic, it is free to read. If you enjoy my comic tutorials and you're looking for more comic help, you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com and read my intro to comic craft series. I have a lot of really great in-depth posts on creating your own comics over there. You can also check out my intro to comic craft series and my making comic series here on YouTube. If you want to support what I do and help me do more of it, you can join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. My wonderful patrons get access to loads of goodies from my comics for freezies on Gumroad to access to my making comics class materials. Now this is a class that is taught here in Nashville. And since my patrons cannot attend that class, I give them access to everything I can give them, including additional videos, handouts, printouts, resource sheets, and more. So if you're looking to learn comics on your own time, that is a really affordable way to do so. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with me, for watching this video, and I hope this was helpful, useful, and informative. Have a great day, guys. Bye!